So good morning, everyone. Welcome to the plenary lecture this morning. It is a pleasure to introduce uh, prof the, today's uh, distinguished speaker, Professor Pao Chou Ngo, or simply Chou as, uh, to those who knew him, who knows him. Chou is a Vietnamese French mathematician at the University of Chicago, best known for proving the fundamental lemma in the Langlands program. He is the first Vietnamese national to have received the Fuse Medal in 2010. Cho became a professor at University of Paris Sud in 2005 at the age of 33. That same year, he received the title of professor in Vietnam, becoming the country's youngest ever professor. Since 2007, Cho has worked at the Institute for Advanced Studies at Princeton, New Jersey, as well as at the Hanoi Institute of Mathematics. But since 2010, he joined the mathematics faculty at the University of Chicago. He also served as the scientific director of the newly founded Vietnam Institute for Advanced Studies in Mathematics uh, from 2011. Cho first came to prominence by proving in joint work with Gerard Lemong the fundamental lemma for unitary groups. For this work, Cho and Lemong were awarded the Clay Research Award in 2004. In 2008, Cho eventually succeeded in proving the fundamental lemma for Lie algebras, together with results from John Luke Wasperge, who had earlier deduced stronger forms of the fundamental lemma from this result. This completed the proof of the fundamental lemma in general. Cho's proof of the general case of the fundamental lemma was selected by Times as one of the top 10 scientific discoveries of 2009. Among the many honors that follows, he received the Fuse Medal in 2010. And in 2011, he received the Legion of Honor from the French government. So without further ado, uh, let's welcome Professor Pao Ngo to deliver his plenary lecture this morning. Hello, my name is Ngo Bao I'm Professor of Mathematics at the University of Chicago. I'm very happy to be invited to GISS this year in Singapore, uh, I mean virtually. Uh, so what I am to, I would, would like to talk to you with this, um, about the Riemann zeta function and its generalization. So it's very um, uh, central topics in number theory and in mathematics uh, from, uh, it's, it's been driving a lot of research in mathematics currently. Although we start really back uh, to uh, mathematical antiquities, uh, from the day of antiquities, um, uh, Greek mathematicians and philosophers were only very um, puzzled by the, uh, the quantum prime numbers. And one of the um, of some uh, discovery they made that they are actually infinite in many prime numbers, and they proved it rigorously um, in Euclid books elements. I'm not going to repeat that that proof, that beautiful proof based on the on the uh, on the uh, proof by um, by absurd. But actually, I, I want to move uh, very fast forward time uh, until classical period, where um, in which the, uh, the Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler gave a beautiful analytic proof. So Euler styled this identity. Uh, when you, you see in the screen uh, on the left hand side, you have the uh, infinite series, sum from n to 1 to infinity of n to the minus s. On the right hand side, you have the infinite product over prime numbers. Of the, the factors are 1 minus p to the minus s and the whole inverse. Right? Um, you can prove the identity very formally because the uh, uh, when you expand um, uh, the factor on the right hand side, you get some, some infinite true number series, and you can equate them by thus by using the, the fact that every integer, every natural integer, has a unique uh, prime factorization. Uh, so, but that is the, um, uh, however, um, uh, a non rigorous proof because uh, uh, we first had to establish convergence before dealing with infinite sum and infinite series. And indeed, uh, in this case, um, both uh, the left-hand side and the right-hand side are absolute convergent uh, for any real numbers s greater than one. 
and not convergent when s is smaller than one that uh, we learned from the first uh, um, principle in analysis and uh, both both uh, and, and now you see that the uh, the the main uh, focus is on exactly on the on s one to one and s equal to one you know on the left hand side you have this the, the harmonic series and uh, which is uh, one um, uh, the sum of n inverse of n which is not convergent uh, which is divergent but it's on the right hand side if there are finally many prime numbers it's ob obviously um, convergent so uh, um, if you assume there are finite many prime numbers, we end up into some very um, kind of some very contradictions. So that was all a proof. Um, we start with the the fact that every digit has unique prime factorizations, and by passing by analysis by the by the divergence of the uh, harmonic series, we arrive at the conclusion that there are infinite many prime numbers. And in this, we see that actually these identities for the, the oil of product uh, play a fundamental role in the study of prime numbers. So this is the second the second uh, slide, and where uh, this this function is why you call the Riemann-Zeta function, although that was Euler who the first introduces. So what demanded is look at the same sum, uh, n from one to infinity of n to the negative s, but now instead of as being a real numbers, we might think about it as a, a function of complex variables. Now, S is a complex uh, variables. So, what change? So, on uh, you know, when the real part T of S is greater than one, nothing change. Uh, here, you can have a, a absolute convergent series, and this series. Can be have the Euler product is product of a on prime p of the, the Euler local factors one minus p to the minus s to the whole to the minus one. But what is very interesting is when you think about complex variables, is that this function can be analytically continued. That you can ex, you can uh, uh, extend you can prolongate the function zeta on the whole uh, complex plane. With of course, it keep have it having your bones at s one to one. Right? So, for instance, then you can speak about the value of zeta function when s when s one to zero, for example. Then you, uh, you you get some kind of magical identities that you know the uh, mathematicians in the class computer are very fond of. You get some like when when s one to zero, we had one plus one plus one, etc. It seemed to be equal to the value of z type at zero, that is minus one half. And uh, you take s equal to negative one, it's even more curious to guess the uh, the values of, uh, of z type at ne negative one, is, which is uh, negative one twelve, is one plus two plus three plus et cetera, et cetera. Of course, it is just uh, it, it, this is not this is not standard entities. One plus two plus three plus four is just a divergent series. Uh, it is not equal to negative one half. But however, there is a way to think of one plus two plus three as if it is negative one one twelve. If we we see uh, this uh, in families with s changing, and uh, and s become negative one, and z times negative one is negative 112. So that is the very, when Riemann introduced these uh, complex parameters, uh, then you can make sign of this uh, infinite series even for the values of S where the series is not convergent. So uh, that is, uh, this series bear the, the name of Riemann. <coughs> uh, so in keeping studying a prime number P, it's actually a very interesting thing to um, uh, to not to instead of studying zeta from itself to look at it logarithmic derivative, that is zeta prime of s over zeta of s, and when you expand it, you get a sum again okay, if it's sum from n one to infinity of lambda n over n to the s, 
where lambda n is called von Magon function, which is equal to log p if n is a power of p and zero otherwise. So, you know, um, for example, uh, lambda of six is going to be zero because six is two times three. So we only keep the values uh, n prime or square root prime or, or cubic power prime, etc. So, uh, so on the right hand side, we essentially you get a sum over primes and the power of primes. And that is how you can um, study the uh, distribution of prime numbers. So the prime number theorem, that is one of the big theorem um, in number theory, that's saying that if, if you count the, uh, uh, the number of prime numbers less than or not no more than some given num given real number x, positive number x, then as x goes to infinity, uh, now pi of x, uh, uh, is approximately x over log x, which means that the ratio of pi x, pi of x, and divided by x divided by log x, we can uh, tend to one as x goes to infinity. And uh, uh, so that is actually the, the, the subject of the papers, the, the only single paper that uh, Riemann ever wrote on number theory, but really, uh, Mark the, the beginning of modern number theory, and his papers is on the number of prime less than a given magnitude. So you want to have uh, estimate uh, uh, asymptotic behaviors, understand asymptotics of this function pi of x, and it's actually not very difficult to see that instead of counting pi of x, that means assign one to x prime numbers and zero to other numbers. You can change it into some other function like lambda n, the Fermat-Gon function, which is more related to the Riemann-Zeta functions, and it is actually diff uh, can be proven in by the elementary means that um, uh, the pi number theorem that pi of x is equivalent to x over log x is equivalent to the factor sum of lambda n and n less than x is equivalent to x. So that um, uh, so instead of of uh, just counting prime numbers, which is going to count but with weight, even by the by the Fermat-Gon function, which is equivalent and which is m more accessible by um, uh, uh, anal by uh, analysis. So in general, when you look at some Dirichlet series, that we, uh, the sum of n to the minus s, but weighted by some arithmetic function, a of n. Um, and we assume that the, um, this series you can converge when the real property of S is greater than something like sigma zero. Uh, then uh, 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 by the Perron formula, you can uh, uh, see that the sum of a n, so this is some of this arithmetic from a n, can be computed by the integrons of the function g s over some uh, some vertical line. Right, when it is after convergence. And now, um, the, the trick to estimate the, um, the sum is going to use analytic continuation. So instead of integrate on this line, we are going to move the integration line to the left, to the, to the, to the area. As, you know, the, 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 the further you can move, the better the estimate you can get on this sum of arithmetic functions. And um, so assuming that the function g of s has a meromorphic continuation and you can push integration lender as far as possible, then you can obtain that the fact that this sum of a n, like the sum of Fulmagon function, can be estimated in terms of the points of the, of the function g of s. So, uh, by this thought, I think this is basically the, the ideas, the big idea of, of Riemann. You can es estimate that the um, the points of D, the D log, the uh, derivative logarithmic of some zeta, is going have have single point s one to one, as much as from zeta, and it have uh, and uh, uh, and. Um, uh, if we know that there is, uh, there's no, um, if they have no zero on the on the on the 
on the line of the productive H121, and then uh, we can actually prove the, the prime number theorem by this the piece where I just explained. And but the, the if you can push it further, not just a little bit away from the, the line S121, but go the further you know, to the critical line real property of H1 one half, then the um, <coughs> then the um, you, you get the best uh, you know the everything you can say about distribution of prime numbers. So that is the what Riemann did. You prove that the Riemann zeta function can be and it continues on the home plane. It has a functional equation and it can recture that on the zeros of the zeta function and which corresponds to the points of the of the log zeta uh, lie on the critical line of the uh, of s one to one half the riemann zeta conjectures on the zero of the zeta function is certainly the, the most well known and so the most important conjectures uh, standing conjecture in prime number theory and if you ask any number theories what they really want to prove uh, I mean, they can dream to prove it probably will be a Riemann zeta conjecture, Riemann conjecture of data functions. So, um, so that is my very brief story on the uh, on the Riemann zeta function. We start with this um, uh, um, this Euler's uh, product. We spread the sum of n to the minus s at the product of the prime p. Um, and uh, um, we, we are introducing S as a complex parameters and following Riemann, you can prove that the function is of S, which I previously on defy when the real property of S is greater than one, you can um, extend um, meromorphically, you can continue meromorphically data S to a whole complex plane the function is unique point at S121, and um, more of it actually satisfy a, fun, a beautiful functional equation as the tab S uh, is, is uh, the related tab the, of S and the tab 1 minus S. And, uh, and uh, uh, the, the prime number theorem, that is the how, as, how many prime less than some given magnitude, is uh, uh, can be approached by finding the points of the of the of the logarithmic derivative of uh, zeta, because uh, this uh, um, zeta prime s over zeta s is uh, can be expressed as the sum of the lambda n over n minus s. Where lambda n is the Volmogon function that basically count uh, prime numbers. So the um, uh, uh, and uh, we, by the by this uh, Perron formula uh, that uh, that express the sum of a n with n less than the magnitude as uh, some integral of the function of the, this, this uh, uh, complex analytic function on the on some vertical line, and then you can push in the integration line to the left. You can. Um, uh, he can have very, very good uh, asymptotic expression of the sum of a n if we know the location of the point of the function g, in this case, the, of the d log, uh, d zeta. Uh, and so the um, the points of the logarithmic derivative of zeta corresponding to the zero from z zeta. So that's why we really want to know where are the zero of the zeta functions. And the Riemann conjectures um, uh, that they are, except some 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 trivial zeros of the uh, negative integers, they are all uh, located on over the um, of the real line of symmetries at the S, uh, real property of s even one half. And now let, let me uh, discuss some very related function. Uh, 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 that had to do with the, the question uh, to count prime numbers in some given arithmetic progression. Uh, so for, for that, we fix some, some integer n for the conductor and fix some character uh, of the group of z mod n z star. Uh, um, for example, n equal to 3, 
you can take chi of n is, uh, is 0 if n is uh, a multiple of 3, and 1 if n can go to 1 more 3, and negative 1 is not. And then you can form uh, the Kondirake L function, the very similar looking sum of n to the min minus s, but now weighted by this directly character, chi of n. Uh, and uh, the same uh, proof as Riemann uh, for, for Riemann zeta function, one can prove that this function, the AKL function, can be continued holomorphically, so there's no bonds of a whole complex plane, and also satisfy a functional equation relating s to 1 minus s. And, uh, and uh, directly uh, uh, also prove that if it may need prime numbers, it is arithmetic progression uh, from uh, even the fact that this function has no bond as well to what. So um, uh, one can ask how um, it is a simple, it, can we have a, other function uh, like the uh, like zeta function or the L function, which are obviously very, uh, um, you know, um, prominent um, piece in the classical number theory. But when you move to the 20th century, uh, uh, when the, uh, we start uh, studying a, a, a very beautiful object, the modular forms, the first invented by Henri Poincaré. Um, so modular form on the half plane, complex half plane H, a, a free on part of, uh, part of uh, Imagine the party is greater than the positive. It satisfies some kind of symmetry that we that f when you apply a z plus b c z plus b, then it essentially unchanged. As every uh, human, that uh, um, the change is uh, given by uh, this is simple factors called the modular character c z plus d to the k. And uh, for a b c d, some uh, some integral matrix, and such form. We have uh, uh, a Taylor expansion because of, you know, for example, if gamma the is uh, all the integral matrices, then F Z can can de develop into uh, some Fourier series, so A N to the exponential two I P and Z, um, and then you can also consider this Dirichlet series by taking A N to M minus S, and what has this called Hecker this uh, Decreasing function, decreasing series, also have a uh, meromorphic continuation and satisfy the functional equation very similar to the Riemann-Zeta function and decreasing L function. And this is uh, uh, this astonishing fact has uh, really um, uh, drive a lot, uh, driven a lot of studies in mathematics in 20th centuries. Um, what to understand is the phenomenon, uh, how to relate the um, Riemann zeta function, Hecker L function, and so on. Um, so this is the uh, uh, that I, I, I wrote the, the more more precise functional equation for the zeta function. If we uh, you, you need to um, modify uh, zeta function by some uh, gamma factors, uh, here precise the gamma of s over two and uh, uh, and, which has, and then we, we get this function is completely symmetrical. Um, uh, when you uh, when you flip over the axis of uh, real particle and one half, and uh, the it, so so you need to uh, to add some additional factors uh, to have function, to the, have a perfect functional equation, and to do the same for DKL function. But now the gamma factor is slightly more complicated, and also uh, have uh, other factors related to prime dividing the conductor, for example. So, um, so we really want to understand what, uh, how we can establish the the general theory of zeta function L function, and that has become the uh, one of the first motivation uh, for the Langlands programs. But let's sort to of the um, come back to the. Um, Okay, of uh, this one another uh, uh, 
you know, one of the cornerstone development model number theory. Um, so in uh, Tate did this, uh, Tate developed uh, uh, the theory of Riemann zeta function and include also the DKL function based on the uh, full analysis of the addends. Uh, so the addends, um, so it, it start from a uh, uh, Russian number queues and as you know, uh, it's, it's not completely easy to understand what real, real numbers. The real numbers are, are the way you complete Russian numbers uh, so that on course sequence converges. Uh, so that gives you real numbers. But if you have uh, the, the chain, the distance, usual distance um, uh, to the periodic distance, the two numbers are close. If the difference is highly divisible by some prime p, then the compression will give rise to a new uh, local fin that will the free of the periodic numbers. And it actually, it's not very intuitive, but actually it's very fundamental to put on together um, uh, ring of addends R of, and on the QP. Um, and here, I, uh, I, you know, because these public lectures, I, I, I couldn't define it properly. So it's not the whole product, it's about the rest of the product. We have to put some condition to make sure that A remain a locally compact. Um, and Q is going to be a compact discrete subfeed of, of uh, sub subfeed of uh, subgroup of A. And now by uh, um, uh, the the you know the, the way that proceed is to you do Fourier transform on D and QP and do the Mellian transforms and these give uh, and also apply the possible summation formula to the uh, co compact discrete subgroup Q inside A, and that gives rise to the functional equation. And um, in this way, the one of the very beautiful things on the different local factors, even the one that actually added it in fittings, is very clearly displayed in the data analysis of the, of the Riemann zeta functions. So now, uh, Land land is a way to how they have given uh, proposed a, a very short framework how to um, understand properly uh, the generalization of prima zeta function, of L function, of DKL function, of Hecker L function, and also the other approach uh, that fully analytic uh, proposed by John Tate. Um, so for Jackie Langland construct the, the Hecker theory entirely as automorphic representation of the group GN2 of A, so the group the matrices whose value is the addends. And uh, Langlands define for every reductive group called the dual groups. Um, uh, and uh, um, uh, the, the dual group is very important in, in the way that the dual group is somehow classified representation of the groups. And so for every automorphic representation of G and every finite di dimensional representation of the dual groups, Langland did, can define some the, uh, some L, completely very general L function, depending on the automorphic function pi, the finite dimensional representation rho, and the complex parameter S as all a product, very much in the same way as in the original Riemann zeta function. And now the question is, of course, uh, so this, this definition really encompasses uh, on the known L function before, uh, Riemann zeta function, JKL functions, HKL function, and so on. And it gives, um, you know, the, uh, the great generalization of that. But then the question, the very um, uh, the important question is how, how can you prove that this uh, L function uh, satisfies the same properties as Riemann zeta functions? And for example, you can prove it in metamorphic continuation and prove a functional equation. So that uh, still remains some of the most important questions in the Lalland's programs. So the um, uh, important case known is due to Wurman and Jacquet, who generalized his work of uh, date uh, in the case of G equal to GLN, the group full general linear group, and, and, and wrote the standard representative of dual group of GLN, which is GLN itself. And uh, um, so Langlands, um, uh, in his, he really um, 
land map papers going to problem with more fit forms uh, propose a couple of conjectures each before definition of random dual groups he pose uh, definition of automorphic L function he put conjectures of pleuromorphic continuation and functional equations but then he pose another conjectures which is very much in the way uh, you know in the continuation like this when the factority conjectures and I don't I cannot explain here the exact content of these conjectures that he roughly say that all automorphic L functions are the standard L function of GNA that have been Construct and studied by Goldman Jacquet. So that can reduce the factorality conjecture to reduce the genome case to the standard case uh, that's been known to the usual Goldman and Jacquet. So another, in, in another, um, uh, another pillar in the Lennon's program is the Lennon reciprocity conjectures. Let's say that, you know, all L function, the zeta function, we that encounters in number theories on has Vegeta function that are attached to algebraic varieties are also uh, uh, the uh, automorphic L functions. Right. So that is um, that is a consequence of the step conjectures, but that is that is how you can phrase this in terms of L functions. So that is very important because, for example, in the um, you you so they have heard about is uh, the great achievement of mathematics in the other 20th centuries when Andrew Wise proved, uh, finally proved the uh, last theorem of Fermat. Uh, and he proved it by, uh, by a very complex apparatus of mathematics using an analytic L function, an analytic curve. But, you know, for doing that, one of the things he needed to prove is that. Uh, Actually, what he proved is that the, the, um, the L function attached elliptic curve is also some L function attached to, to the cut the modular form of that study by Hecker. And so, this is uh, somehow uh, this can be seen as a, a special case of the general reciprocity conjectures. So, um, all this fit very well together, and uh, it seemed to, uh, to, to give us. Uh, through this um, uh, uh, this concept of L function that can on on the way back to Euler and demand um, a way to um, to connect and deepen a lot of uh, mathematics um, analysis, uh, representation theory, representative groups, and arithmetic, um, uh, um, the study of uh, diffraction equation of uh, uh, let me study of, of uh, equation of system polynomials, uh, finding solution in rational numbers, and how are they connected to uh, uh, to analysis, to uh, automorphic representation through this uh, this beautiful but very mysterious uh, concept that has the L function, which are uh, generalization of Riemann zeta functions, and. Uh, there's a lot of things to do, and I really hope some of you will join us uh, to study mathematics and especially to study Riemann zeta function. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Professor Goh, for the uh, fascinating talk that takes us from Euclid all the way to present day Langlands. And um, so here now we are at the Q&A session. Uh, I hope the audience has enjoyed the talk. If you have any questions, uh, please send them in to the online channel. And, uh, you know, Professor Go and I have known each other for close to 20 years. It's a bit awkward to talk to him in a very formal way. So maybe I'll dispense with the formality and just uh, address him by his first name. So Cho, thanks very much for joining us. Um, let me see if there are any questions that come in. Okay, so I guess we are still waiting uh, to see if anyone have any questions. Maybe I will start with a, a question uh, for you. Yeah, so uh, I was wondering, uh, Cho, in your opinion, uh, do you think it would be more interesting for mathematics if the Riemann hypothesis, which you mentioned in your talk, is proven to be correct or is proven to be false? I mean, which one do you think excites you? Which scenario excites you more?
some audio problem. I have uh, too many sounds at the same time. I, I'm, I couldn't figure out what the question. Do you mind to? Yes. Hello, by the way. Uh, yeah. So I guess the question I was asking was, uh, you mentioned the Riemann hypothesis in your talk, and I was wondering, uh, in your opinion, do you think it is more interesting for mathematics if the Riemann hypothesis was proven to be true or proven to be false? Well, my personal opinion, of course, is going to be true. I mean, I fully believe it should be true. I mean, it would be disaster if it is turned out to be false. <laughs> yeah, okay. Do you think so we take? Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you. I think we have a question coming in from uh, um, Ron Wawin uh, Chumpu. Sorry if I didn't pronounce your name correctly. Um, so the question says, uh, from the image of the Riemann zeta function, uh, could we use the function to simulate phenomena like the Tonga eruption expansion, tsunami wave or bombs effect? Yeah, it would be a very interesting thought. I'm, I'm not sure that I, it, I'm not sure you should do it, but of course it does some point of zero of, of the function looked a bit like uh, like uh, a lot of explosion on the, uh, but I, <laughs> I found I do not I do not know I do not know if it, 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 the the function could be used to to simulate um, a natural disaster. It, it, it only, I think it, it's only busy enough to to keep a mile or to uh, as need the mystery of prime numbers. It's probably good enough for, for the remote function to do it just that. Okay, thank you. Um, um, if there are other questions, uh, please uh, just send them in uh, to the online channel. And uh, in the meantime, maybe Cho, I can. Uh, uh, maybe I can ask another question while we wait for the questions to come in. Um, so I wonder, um, in your opinion, how close are we to uh, realizing, um, you know, the expectations of the Langlands program? Do you think it is something we can achieve in the uh, in the twenty first century, or do you think it is, you know, it goes even uh, further in the future? I mean, I'm pretty optimistic about the Langlands program. I don't think that is something like it. I think it's clearly you have a lot of. I mean, you are making progress all the time, substantial progress, and we don't, you know, we don't have a, clearly a, a, a strategy or a view on how to 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 get the complete answer finally. But I think make as make constant making a, a progress. And um, yeah, I, I'm sure that it's going, it's going to keep us busy for a while. But I, it's, it's not like uh, Riemann. It's very different, like from the Riemann hypothesis, which basically make no progress in the last for, for a very long time. So mm. I'm, I, I remain very optimistic in, on the Lenin programs. I mean, maybe well, once he would would solve on the question with Lenin pros, it would be a new question would. Could pop up. Um, yeah, so, 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 in your opinion, you feel that uh, uh, the Langlands uh, conjectures might be established first before the Riemann hypothesis? Oh, definitely, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, let me just take a look and see if there are some questions coming in. Okay, I, I don't see any uh, new questions at this point. Uh, if you have any questions for uh, Cho, can you uh, uh, send them through? Yeah, but by the way, I would just want to add something that, uh, that um, you know, you only observe that I make a, a highly technical talk for GISS. So that's it, first time I have to try it. Usually I bit give much more elementary uh, down to earth talk on, on elementary mathematics. But I was asking myself why I should try, try to do something more radical. So I, I was trying to, you know, as the same time to talk about historic mathematics, to introduce and to give you a some kind of insight on what kind of material you are doing. And Professor Gann and, and myself were just 
very committed in Chudu to, to this language program that I present at the end of lectures. Although most most of you maybe you would have no notion of what I was talking about, but I just hopefully I give you some kind of feeling of you know uh, about how what we are doing now is connected to the you know to the development mm. of mathematics. Mm. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, Cho. When you you know I have not looked at the recording of your plenary talk until just now, and uh, I, I was uh, actually amazed that you had the courage to introduce Adele's uh, in, the, in your talk and to go all the way to uh, the Langland's uh, functorality and reciprocity uh, conjecture. And, and indeed, um, at many of the names uh, you know, uh, that you mentioned towards the end of your talk are uh, you know, people who are, I mean, living mathematicians uh, today. So I, I think that it is, uh, it is good for for young people to uh, you know to, to see that this mathematics that you mentioned is not just a mathematics that live in the past but it is uh, something that you know normal people today let's put it that way are actually actively thinking about so i think that um, i think this is a, a very sort of encouraging for young people to 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 know that you know there are still lots of things to do in mathematics today Okay, so uh, so I do not see other uh, uh, questions uh, uh, coming in at the moment. Uh, maybe I'll ask a, a, a separate uh, a question, which is uh, maybe just tangentially related to your talk, uh, which is that um, maybe you could share with us uh, what your uh, research focus has been since uh, you know since the fundamental lemma. Um, I mean, I have been changing a bit. I mean, I have uh, do um, I have been uh, for a couple of years. I've been working on this um, uh, um, uh, course, the Manshif, for example. That can, this is kind of one of the ob a beautiful object that I've been also been very curious since my PhD time, and then I did. Uh, have a fun time to work on this with zero you then you can handle it and and the latest i um i encouraged by lemons i will be trying to study frontal realities and um, from many different perspectives but so, so that it become one of my main you know my main uh, occupations you know, nowadays you know, the, with uh, uh, you know trying to realize this photo this you know, functional equation that i mentioned in my talks it's very a lot up and down uh, from a couple of years. I don't think I've made a lot of progress, but every time I feel the courage, something new happens. So it keep the hope alive somehow. And on the others, on other on other direction, I I was doing just completely different, maybe unrelated. I was studying on the more like in complex geometries, question rate of hitching vibrations, mm -hmm. and uh, it's the in in my world, fundamental lemma, Hitchin vibration come to birth with, with automorphic forms through the fundamental lemma. But now I was studying both kind of different from the Hitchin vibration from a complex geometry perspective and, and functional equation by the more traditional automorphic method. Thanks. Uh, so we have a, a one question coming in. I think we maybe have time for just this one last question. Um, this is from uh, or some of Kapu, and he asks, uh, what do you think is a wise way to approach a really hard problem in math, uh, like this conjecture? Yeah, I mean, I, I keep saying that. I mean, there's, uh, it, the, it, the, it should be very wise in trying to approach a hard problem. You know, you need to, to before starting working, to invest your time, you, you need to have think that you you do have some kind of chance to do it. It's some very little chance, not big, but you need to have some chance. You need to, to, to have some kind of a beginning of new ideas or a new approach, a new view of the problems. Otherwise, it's very difficult. I mean, otherwise, you know, if you keep trying to um, to do what other people did, uh, the chance is kind of very, uh, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not high. When I was, uh, uh, you know, one of, I spent a lot of time with the fundamental name. It took me in the whole, it took me 10 years to do it. But uh, 
Um, for the very beginning, I think I, I, I got a chance. Even it, it, it is, it was not big at the beginning. It, it just keep growing after that. But I, I had a kind of new method that people have not tried before. And if I, I have to do, to do it by the other people do it. I mean, they have, and there's no way they are smarter than other people. I mean, I just I need, I need to have a new way to look at it. If I have to have my chance, so that was that I always the advice that I. I, I keep saying to younger mathematicians that you, before trying to very hard problem, you need to make sure that you you have some kind of very little chance. Maybe not big, but in, you need to be very sure that you have something new in the beginning. Yeah. Thanks, uh, thank, thanks, uh, Cho. I think actually there is still time to squeeze in uh, uh, one other question. So here's an interesting question from, uh, I think, a Vietnamese student, uh, Tron Ha Kwan. Uh, he asks, uh, if there is a connection between the Langlands program and fundamental physics? Yes, I think there are elusive connections. I mean, from the very beginning, um, uh, you know, the, from the very mathematicians start working on infinite dimension representation of Lie groups before the, by the motivation from physics. You know, the, the first people who work on this question are socially physicists. So the, on the birth of the modern theory of automorphic representation, say some connection with physics, and um, and uh, you know, although it doesn't make uh, appearance from now and then, you see automorphic form representation appearing on on physics literatures, on the Einstein series, and, and, and so on. And for the kind of question that I was studying, fundamental lemmas, definitely physics you know, will play a big role. But the first people who actually Introduce this uh, modular space to mathematics. Um, British mathematician Hitchin, he was studying some uh, the the Higgs bandons in some kind of simplified uh, mathematic ways that come give you this modular space Higgs bandons. It's clearly a Higgs, Higgs the name is the same as the Higgs uh, uh, Higgs particles. Of course, it, by the end, it doesn't have much to do with Higgs particles, but uh, the the the, the lie of thought started from there, and also the uh, so the uh, somehow it you really have the feeling that uh, it's not the same thing, but it's very much like we um, there's some kind of very striking similarities that set the same patterns that appear both in physics and in Langlands programs, so, and also this has been made more more concrete somehow by by. But Edward Witten, when he he gave some kind of physicist solution to the geometric Langlands uh, conjectures. Mm. Thanks for sharing your thought, uh, Cho. I think that we are out of time here, so I think it's uh, time to bring this uh, Q and A session to a close. Thanks for joining us again, and uh, we hope that uh, you will be able to visit Singapore uh, at some point in the near future. I hope it too. Thank you, Witek. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.